now. This is Ozark's Fox News at 9. Welcome to Ozark's Fox News at 9. I'm Jennifer Abreu. John has the night off. We begin with your top headlines. These stories are real, new, now. A partial government shutdown is now in its third week. White House lawyers looking into the possibility the president could declare a national emergency to pay for his border wall. He's expected to reveal more details in a live primetime address from the Oval Office tomorrow night. A military withdrawal from Syria will take a lot longer than originally indicated. U.S. troops in Syria will continue to fight ISIS until the group is completely destroyed. National Security Advisor John Bolton arrived in Turkey today, stressing the U.S. wants assurances from the Turkish government about the fate of Syrian Kurds. In the latest court hearing on Russia's attempts to meddle in the 2016 presidential election, a reference to the movie Animal House, and one unamused federal judge. With reports that Mueller's investigation may be coming to an end, the president's lead attorney said they've had official assurances they will see Mueller's final report before any public release. New at 9 tonight. The Greene County Sheriff's Office reported on Facebook they responded to a domestic violence call in the 4600 block of Southwest Street. When deputies got there, they found a 17-year-old who had been shot. The teen was transported to the hospital. Deputies say this is an isolated incident and that the public is not in danger. We will update you with more information as we find out, find out more on OzarksFirst.com. Also new at 9 tonight, Sun Solar in Springfield is transitioning to using American-made panels only. After President Trump implemented tariffs impacting the cost of the products, Sun Solar will only buy panels made in the United States as a more cost-effective way of doing business. Our Bria Douglas is here to tell us what this will mean for customers. Bria. Jen, essentially it means customers won't have to worry about the cost of solar panels going up because now Sun Solar won't have to compensate for the 30% tax increase. The idea of solar panels hasn't caught on in the state of Missouri. In fact, Sun Solar owner Caleb Arthur says less than 1% of the state uses them. The majority of that makeup, though, being right here in the Ozarks. What's exciting is, is that we have over 4,000 solar customers between homes and businesses, and most of those are here in southwest Missouri. So southwest Missouri has had some of the fastest growing uh, solar install rates in the entire Midwest. From now on, Sun Solar won't be using foreign manufacturers for solar panels, going instead with the company in Bellingham, Washington. Arthur thinks the now American-made product could contribute to more Missourians using solar panels. Being in this area, being more conservative-minded uh, Americans, uh, what we like to see is we like to see manufacturing come back. We like to see job creation. Um, and so this is going to be a, a big selling point for customers to be able to adopt a solar and feel good about the products they're putting on their roofs. As for Sun Solar's existing customers, they too benefit from the company switching to U.S. made panels. If the power goes out on the grid, they'll still be able to use the panel because of another American made product. So now batteries, so Tesla Powerwall batteries are also made in the United States. So now homeowners can say, I'm able to get my solar panels and my battery storage from U.S. manufacturers, which has really never occurred before. Currently, Sun Solar is trying to persuade Springfield City Utilities to offer cash rebates as an incentive for customers to go solar, but CU isn't doing so at this time. All right, thanks, Bria. We have some new information for you now. Springfield police are looking for a missing child after a parental kidnapping investigation. Four year old Matthew Bivens was taken by his mother, 37 year old Rosemary Bivens, last Thursday. She was allowed to take the child shopping in Springfield, but never returned. Police don't know where she is right now, but think she may be traveling back to California, but has no vehicle. Investigators are concerned about Matthew's well-being because they say Rosemary is homeless, has a history of drug use, and has no adequate means of caring for Matthew. Matthew's father, Michael Nutt, lives in Springfield and has sole physical custody. Matthew was last seen wearing a blue Spider-Man coat at some apartments near Grand and Glenstone. If you know where he is, call police right away.
We have a developing story for you now. Last year, Missouri voters approved Amendment 2, legalizing medical marijuana here in Missouri. Now, state lawmakers are introducing legislation dealing with various issues surrounding medical marijuana. At least seven pieces of legislation, some in the House, some in the Senate, dealing specifically with how pot should be regulated in the Show Me State are now underway. The bills range in what they hope to amend about how Missouri handles marijuana. One example is House Bill 341, proposed by Republican Representative Ron Hicks of St. Charles. His bill would aim to undo marijuana possession convictions for those who now qualify for medical marijuana cards. Others, like House Bill 292, proposed by Democrat Barbara Ann Washington, would lift convictions for those convicted for possession of 35 grams of marijuana or less. We spoke with both of these representatives today about why they think their bills might have a shot. I think we need to fix the problem with uh, harming those who have those who have those type of felonies on their record as already for possession only. I'm not asking them to do any felony charges or anything like that of expungement, but you're doing something now that is legal that's for your health care, and you've been trying to treat yourself for this forever anyway, but you've been in trouble in the past for treating yourself for a medical condition, and now all of a sudden you have a record due to it, but yet now it's legal. We want to help the sick. We want to help everybody that we can, and this is another way right here to help somebody. Other pot-related legislation this year you might want to know about. Senate Bill 2, which would give extra credit to minorities and women who apply for marijuana growers' licenses. House Bill 238, which would prohibit the state from sharing information about those with medical marijuana prescription with the federal government. And finally, House Bill 157, which would allow adults 21 and older to possess, transport, and sell marijuana as long as it's less than two ounces worth. That bill would also let adults grow their own pot in limited quantities. A Lebanon man is charged with first-degree murder in a woman's death last December. Police say 25-year-old Kevin Caden is responsible for the death of 27-year-old Lakita Williams. Caden was a person of interest in the investigation because of ongoing domestic abuse issues with the victim. Officers found Williams with her throat cut and arms tied behind her back. Caden is being held on a half-a-million-dollar bond. Police in Houston have made an arrest in the shooting of seven-year-old Jasmine Barnes, but he is not the killer. Authorities say Eric Black Jr. only drove the getaway car, so the investigation is ongoing. Because Jasmine was only seven years old when she was shot and killed, the law in Texas is quite clear that this is capital murder, and that's how we've charged him. Eric Black Jr. appeared in court today, charged with capital murder. Officials say Black was behind the wheel in the drive-by shooting that killed a seven-year-old Barnes. She was riding in her mother's car. Initially, many people in the community thought the shooting was racially charged. But authorities now say it was all a case of mistaken identity. Black reportedly told police he learned they targeted the wrong person after watching news coverage of the killing. The funeral for Jasmine Barnes is set for tomorrow. The Uber driver accused of going on a deadly shooting spree in 2016 pled guilty in a Michigan courtroom today. 48-year-old Jason Dalton pled guilty to six counts of murder, two counts of attempted murder, among other charges. The 2016 incident left six people dead and two others injured. In court today, Dalton told the judge he had wanted to do this for quite a while. The charges carry a mandatory life sentence in prison without the possibility of parole. Well, Kroger has a plan to keep up with Amazon. The company tapping Microsoft to help create grocery stores of the future. The partnership will bring digital shelves, prize tags, and advertisements to two pilot stores in Ohio and Washington State. The stores are designed to make it easier for customers and workers to navigate the stores, saving shoppers time and Kroger money. Customers can build shopping lists using Kroger's app. Then the app works with sensors in the store to guide them around as they check off items on their list. 
Well, happening now in the Ozarks, the first step of relocating the Riverside Bridge near the historic Ozark Mill is now underway. Check this out. This happened today as crews began um, the project by lifting the bri bridge truss with a crane for refurbishment. The bridge is on the Finley River. It will eventually be reassembled in the third phase of the process. The 100 year old mill renovation is being funded by Johnny Morris to restore for public tours and a dining space. Branson's Board of Aldermen are scheduled to talk about a proposed memorial to the victims of last year's duck boat tragedy at tomorrow night's meeting. You're seeing renderings of what the memorial would look like. The Tri Lakes Board of Realtors offered to pay for the memorial, which would be at Old School Park. That's near Dolly Parton Stampede on 76 Boulevard. Board members first discussed this in September, but tabled it after some aldermen and local business owners questioned whether there should be a memorial to the tragic event. 17 people died when a duck boat sank on Table Rock Lake during a storm in July. Moving on over to weather now, Jamie, this warm weather was nice while it lasted, but it's not sticking around, is it? Yeah, in January, these kinds of warm spells don't last, and it looks like it's going to be a little while before we see temperatures like this again. In fact, it's really getting back to reality. Colder weather as we slip through the rest of the week, and maybe even a chance for a little wintry weather as we're wrapping up the week. More on that after the break. You're watching Ozarks Fox News at 9 with John Adams. Jennifer Abreu, and weather with Chief Meteorologist Jamie Warner.